So Andy Reid recently spoke about wide receiver Hollywood Brown and made it seem like they would not be using him like many thought, which means they may very well be looking for a receiver with a very particular skill set in the upcoming draft. And in this video, I'll share what that is as well as a few options that would make sense. There's also a Rashi Rice update. He's getting sued and much more. So let's talk about it. But first, how about those? First up, phase one of the Chiefs offseason training program started this week, which allows for voluntary team meetings as well as organized strength and conditioning workouts. This will go on for two weeks virtually, something that the Chiefs have done this way for the last few seasons. Patrick Mahomes is heading up the workouts with many of the skilled position players in Texas, with Patrick saying it's a collab between him, the coaches, and some of the players there. In the AM, they get a workout in to get them moving. Guys can also get treatment, rehab work in as needed. They run routes as well about three times a week and they meet with the coaches at 12 p.m. with the day ending around 2 p.m. at the conclusion of those meetings. Basically, it's not too different doing things there in Texas compared to doing things at the facility, but the main difference is the guys are hearing things from Mahomes and getting his mindset on routes and his thoughts slash preferences behind it all. Plus, Mahomes is getting good one-on-one -on -one time and interaction with his teammates. It's all good for Mahomes to get that time in with them to hear their particular thoughts when they run a route. I get to hear what they are thinking and what they're, what they're, what they're really going. I think when sometimes when the coach is around, they want to do exactly how the coach says, which is the right thinking. But whenever I can hear what they're thinking whenever they're running their routes, it helps me know where they're going to be at and what their timing's going to be. And Mahomes also helps give them a good look into what the coaches are thinking. Then in the afternoon meetings, obviously the coaches take it from there. Mahomes utilizes free time outside of that to spend with his family, but sets aside time to hang out and build rapport with the guys outside of their training sessions uh, by doing things like eating meals and stuff like that. And with phase one officially here, Mahomes and Andy Reid, as well as Nick Bolton, shout out to him, spoke to the media. Nick Bolton is excited for another year with KC and when asked about contract negotiations, uh, he didn't really specify, but said he would love to spend more time here in KC. It's basically a second home with him spending uh, college time at Mizzou and then being drafted to Kansas City. Then Mahomes gave some high praise to Hollywood Brown based on his limited time with him so far. Um, you see the speed, I mean, instantly. What I've liked so far is how hard he works. He's been at the workouts, he's been at the route, the route running, and he wants more. He wants to continue to push himself more and more, and he'll have a great uh, role in this offense, the way he's able to run routes, the way he's able to stretch the field. Pat goes on to say that he thinks things with Hollywood will be different than what people have seen before as they utilize him in ways with Casey's offense that he hasn't been used yet in his career. Of course, he's got speed that the team can use, but Mahomes is pleasantly surprised by Hollywood's route running. He's got a good feel for space. We can utilize that ability over the middle of the field. I know he's done that in the past, but I think we can utilize it at an even higher uh, load. So I think it'll be uh, something that we can really uh, emphasize in our offense. Andy Reid commented on Hollywood as well, saying he's a good speed receiver that can play both inside or outside, then added an interesting snippet regarding him being a deep threat or not really. And I I stay away from saying a deep threat, although he can do that. And I just found that interesting. Andy mentioned he wanted to stay away from calling Marquise Brown a deep threat, even though this man runs a 4.2740 and can, in theory, be used as exactly that. I think that speaks to what Mahomes was saying earlier about him. He's such a good route runner, they see other ways to use him as well. Maybe a more multi-dimensional type of guy rather than purely a stretch the field guy, which is fine by me, uh, but that means the Chiefs need a primary deep threat in the wide receiver room or a guy they use to stretch the field quite often like they did with MVS last year. I mean, Hollywood can be used like that at times, but they're just making it seem like they're going to be using him multiple different ways. And as of right now, you have Sky Moore, Kadarius Tony, Justin Watson, Rashi Rice for some of the season pending that suspension, and obviously Hollywood Brown as those most likely making the starting roster at the moment. Justin Watson can be used as a deep threat guy in his own way. We've seen him do that, but outside of him and Hollywood, that's really about it. There's still the possibility they sign free agent McCole Hardman back to a one-year deal, maybe after the draft, and he's got some speed, but also struggles with tracking the deep ball at times, as well as finishing through on his routes. So maybe, just maybe, Andy Reid gave a little clue into what the Chiefs could be looking for in the draft 
at least when it comes to a receiver opting to get a true speed guy for their offense. Well, sign me up immediately for Brian Thomas Jr., please, and thank you. He's a downfield burner with elite ball tracking skills, something the Chiefs really lacked last season. Of course, they'd most likely have to trade up to get him, and if Brian Thomas Jr. reaches the late teens, it may very well be worth moving to get this man. For more details on him and other potential round one receivers, make sure to check out the video I dropped Monday. It is much more in depth on all these guys, but some other speed guys could be Xavier Worthy. He's very quick, obviously. We know he set the uh, new Combine 40 record with a blazing speed of 4.21. Both Worthy and Brian Thomas Jr. had the fastest 40s in this draft class, but there are plenty of others with speed as well. Xavier Leggett, haven't talked about him. He ran a 4.3940, clocked one of the fastest recorded game speeds last season at 22.3 miles per hour, and per Dane Brugler, quote, led all power five receivers with four receptions of 50 or more yards in 2023, I like that. Troy Franklin, he's another. That's a tall, long wideout with burner type speed that displays breakaway skills to accelerate past defenders. And the list goes on, there's, there's plenty, okay? Real options out there for KC in regards to getting a potential deep threat, with this being one of the best wide receiver draft classes in a long time, with some saying possibly ever. And with that being said, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think the Chiefs could very well be looking for a legitimate deep threat in the draft? And if so, based on that, speed above all else vertically, who would you like to see them get? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, speaking of the draft, Mahomes said that both Brett Veach and Coach Reed let him in about the draft combos they are having as an organization on some players, and he enjoys watching film on some of those guys. He definitely gives some input to Andy and Veach about them, but at the end of the day, he trusts Brett Veach and his team and knows they are gonna do their thing with draft selections, something they've shown to do consistently at a high level year in and year out. Andy Reed said there's a tremendous amount of effort researching first round picks, but there needs to be an emphasis on the entire draft board, noting that Veach and company have been on lockdown getting it already, so they are doing just that. They will definitely be eyeing receiver and tackle early on. Wanye Morris had some good experience last year. He started in four games at left tackle when he had to step in for the injured Donovan Smith. There will be a definite improvement this next year as well from him, says Andy Reid, but there's gonna be competition in that room, and what I took that to mean is, Wanye isn't yet the bona fide starting left tackle, and they look to add to the room. It's gonna be in the draft, as well as maybe even bringing back Donovan Smith or some other vet after the draft, depending on the offensive tackle they are able to land. And with the draft being roughly a week away, I can't wait to see how it all plays out instead of surmising and trying to guess. Next up, Mahomes was also asked about what stood out to him with the new guys there in Texas, as well as former Welsh rugby star, Lewis Rees-Zamet. He's new, but they asked specifically about him. Mahomes said the biggest thing is how hard these guys wanna work. He mentioned Nico Remigio, the standout last year until he dislocated his shoulder, needed surgery, and was put on IR. This happened during training camp. Then Anthony Miller, they signed him uh, late in the season, as well as Lewis Reese Zamet. Big Red noted that it's not an easy transition from rugby to football, but LRZ has the athletic ability with some aspects carrying over from one sport to the next. They plan to work him as a running back and then see about him working with Dave Tobe on special teams. He'll get used to things from all the training, uh, all the meetings and all that, then they'll just see how it goes for him. Dave Tobe's gonna have a lot of guys out there practicing returning punts and kicks at practice, so Lewis will definitely be in the mix there. And while the question was really about the new guys working in with Mahomes in Texas, Pat made sure to shout out both Sky Moore, who's entering year three, and Kadarius Tony being there working and teaching the newer guys as well. And on the subject of Kadarius Tony, Andy Reid talked about him briefly in his presser. Kadarius is arguably one of the most talented guys we have on the team. It's just a matter of staying healthy and being able to stay on the field. And you always hear about the reliability, accountability, all those things that go, go into it. And so I'm expecting him to come back ripping and ready to go. He said it's great Tony's out there working with Mahomes and the crew, putting the work in. They like Kadarius. It's just a matter of having him out there on the football field. Yeah, I mean, that's been the story of Tony's entire career, even back with his time in New York. He's a freak athlete, one of the most talented guys probably on the roster, but has a really, really hard time staying healthy, which has remained true to this day. But with this being a contract year for Kadarius Tony, maybe we'll see a bit more from him. 
Time will surely tell. Someone else many are hoping to not only see more of here soon, but hear more about as well in regards to his current legal situation, and that is obviously Rashi Rice. Right now, Rice is facing eight felony charges after wrecking his car on a Texas freeway and fleeing the scene. Last week, he was booked at a Texas jail, was released Thursday night on a $40,000 bond, and is now facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit filed by two victims of the crash. More on that lawsuit here in a moment, but Andy Reid did speak about Rice and his presser yesterday, right from the jump, filling in a little bit about the situation and at least where he is willing to go with it. As far as Rasheed Rice goes, his situation, I'm leaving that like we We've done most of these just for the law enforcement part of it to take place, and we will go from there with that. I have had an opportunity to talk to Rishi, and I'm not going to obviously get into that right now. We're, we're just kind of gathering everything and trying to make sure we have all the bases covered. There. He then said Rice will participate right now in OTAs via Zoom, just like everybody else. Other than that, there's nothing going on there at the facilities for the players, so I take it he will be in those virtual meetings. And Mahomes said he's worked out with Rice already this offseason and is sure he will continue working with Rice here in Texas, even as his legal process continues to play out. Adam Teicher of ESPN then asked Big Red if Rice will be there in KC when everybody is supposed to be on location, or if it's still voluntary workouts when everybody is voluntarily supposed to be on location, and Andy gave his favorite answer when it comes to stuff like this. Yeah, we'll just see see how it goes there, Sam. I mean, I want to get, you know, keep gathering the information from the law enforcement people. We'll just see where everything goes from there. He then said the most important thing is that Rice has learned from this situation, and from here, they're going to have to wait and see what takes place as everything continues playing out. Something that is still developing is both Rashi Rice and Teddy Knox. This was announced this week, I believe. And Teddy, in case you forgot, is the SMU player who is now suspended from the football team that was driving Rice's Corvette. Two cars were crashed. Rice was renting the Lambo. Teddy was driving Rice's Corvette. They're being sued. Both of them are being sued for over a million dollars in damages and 10 million in punitive damages by two victims in the crash. Irina... Gramova and Edward Petrovsky, I tried my best, are seeking monetary relief for over a million for severe injuries, with their injuries being listed out here on the screen, there's quite a few, with other reasons for the punitive damages going above the million being listed as physical and mental harm, property damages, costs of medical prevention, loss of earnings, among several other claims. So on top of the felony charges and potential legal repercussions, as well as a looming suspension from the NFL, Rice is also possibly going to be broke as they come for his money. And they are well within their right to do that. And obviously, like Andy Reid said, we've just got to let everything play out. But as of right now, that's a lot going on for the 23-year-old Rice. Hopefully, he does indeed learn from this and will be better in every way because of it. Let me know your thoughts on all this madness in the comments down below. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.